well, as you all know, Checkmate 214 was a large phase three trial uh, that recruited 1,096 patients with advanced clear cerebral shock carcinoma for first line therapy. And patients were randomized to receive nivolumab or ipilimumab or sunitinib. The primary analysis was focused on patients who had poor risk or intermediate risk by the IMDC criteria. The results, as you well know, were presented for the first time, the primary analysis at ESMO 2017, and again at CITSI, November 2017, and were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in March of 2018. And subsequently approved, this regimen was approved by the FDA in April 2018, based on an important, the primary endpoint of the trial was overall survival in patients who had either poor risk or intermediate risk by MDC. Based on the overall survival benefit, the FDA approved nivolumab and ipilimumab, and subsequently, recently, was also approved in, the, in Europe by DMA. So what I will be presenting on Saturday is the update of those results. The primary analysis that was the ESMO presentation and subsequent publication in the England Journal of Medicine was a 17-month uh, minimum follow-up. And here we're presenting the 30-month minimum follow-up. So this is an extended follow-up that basically confirmed the results that nivolumab, ipilimumab produced a superior overall survival compared to sinitinib in patients with intermediate risk and poor risk RCC. Well, the, the median OS for nivolumab, ipilimumab for patients with advanced poor risk or immediate risk is still not reached at 30-month medium follow -up, mean, minimum follow-up and a 32-month median follow-up. So still, the median OS for NIVEP, NIVEP is still not reached, whereas it's still uh, 26 months with sunitinib. Uh, this is the median OS. Now, for the intent to treat all patients, regardless of the risk, so that includes favorable risk as well as the intermediate and poor risk, the median OS was also superior in patients with uh, NIVEP and the median OS uh, is now 37 months with sinitinib, but still not reached with NIVOAP, and the intent to treat all the patients. Now, response rate was still in favor of NIVOAP. Overall response rate in uh, intermediate risk or risk was 42%, and was 29% uh, in the updated analysis. So it's still a significant uh, improvement in uh, OS, in uh, objective response rate as well. CR rate is 11% with uh, nevo epi in patients with intermediate risk or risk compared to 1% with sunitinib. So the updated uh, analysis, the results, confirm the initial analysis vis-a-vis -vis OS improvement in intermediate risk or risk, higher objective response rate, and if we, when we uh, look at the progression-free survival, although the median of uh, PFS was not such significant uh, compared to uh, the PFS with sunitinib. However, if you look at the curves, the kaplan bar curves, there is a plateauing. There is a shoulder, a tail at the end of the curve, which is higher with nevo EP compared to sunitinib. So even if you, if you look at a snapshot median, uh, there is no significant difference. But clearly, as Tamba goes by with further and further follow-up, we're seeing a a plateauing for the nivo epi uh, in patients with intermediate risk for risk compared to sunitinib with vis-a-vis -vis the progression free survival. But CR8 is 11% with nivo epi versus 1% with sunitinib in patients with uh, intermediate risk and poor risk. Interestingly now, in patients with fibro risk, which is was an exploratory analysis in the primary uh, uh, data that was published in New England, those were 249 patients 125 were, uh, of those were randomized to nevo epi, 124 were randomized to sunitinib. And if you look at that patient initially, at that patient population, that cohort, which was an exploratory endpoint analysis, in the initial, uh, at the 17-month minimum follow-up, the response rate was 52% with sunitinib, it was 29% with nevo epi. The updated analysis, as I will show on Saturday, the median 
the, the uh, response rate, objective response rate with sinitinib in favorable was 50%, was 39% with um, nivolumab. The median PFS was 25.1 months versus 13 uh, uh, nine months for the sunitinib uh, for the nivolumab. When you look at the updated, it's 19.9 versus 13.9. So really, it went from the median PFS with sunitinib in favorable risk 25 versus 15 with uh, nivolumab. Now it's around 20 with sunitinib and around 14, uh, rounding up 20 and 14 median PFS with sinitinib and nivolumab. CR rate, initially uh, it is now for the favorable risk, 8% uh, CR rate with nivolumab versus 4%. Subgroup analysis, very small, but obviously this is important to show that of those patients who achieved a CR, who had favorable risk, I said 8%, but if you look at those, nine out of 10 who had CR, nine of them maintain those CRs. So continued complete remission in uh, the favorable risk treated with NIVO-EP, nine out of 10 continued CRs versus only two out of five with sunitinib. So doubling of the CR rate in favorable risk. And very importantly, although numbers are small, nine of those 10 patients who achieved CR with NIVO-EP are still in CR versus only Two out of five. Obviously, we want to uh, build on this. Nivo EP is a cornerstone for patients with um, uh, intermediate risk and poor risk. I uh, view this as the backbone for future trials to add on this. So, we are uh, actually uh, doing a uh, trial with a triplet of Nevo EP and another immune agent uh, called Nectar 214, which is uh, a, a CD122 agonist piglet IL-2 that signals through the interleukin-2 pathway because in uh, RCC and in melanoma, there are three pathways that are relevant and uh, validated in uh, oncology. And that's the PD-1, PD-L1 pathway, CTL4 pathway, and the interleukin pathway. So a study that will be in the future after we finish this phase one, where we are combining nevo -AP and this new agent that is a novel uh, piglet IL-2. Uh, moving forward, we hope that this will be, a, the, the next uh, iteration will be the triplet of nevo -AP plus uh, nectar versus nevo -AP. There is also, uh, there are efforts ongoing now to combine nevo EP plus a, uh, a TKI, again, to look at, uh, you know, adding to the uh, nevo EP. I think the important uh, findings of, of Checkmate 214 is that there is the opportunity for patients who have favorable risk, intermediate risk, or poor risk to achieve a complete response that's durable. And I have, there are patients on that study from Checkmate 214 who are now past three years and some are past four years who remain in remission. Some of them who had discontinued because of toxicity remain in complete response, having not required to receive further therapy other than the initial therapy they received with nivo -AP. So the study, the up, this updated, uh, the updated results with a 30 month of a minimum follow-up, 32 months median follow-up of Checkmate 214 is that we did not see any uh, new signals of concern regarding safety. nivo uh, overall uh, yielded uh, fewer grade three, four adverse events compared to sinitinib. And the adverse events that you see with nivo -AP are usually in the first two, three months, whereas the adverse events with sinitinib are chronic and they continue for a long time. Uh, there were still only eight deaths on the nivo -AP arm out of 547, uh, four uh, 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 deaths of, uh, on the sunitinib arm. So really 1.5% fatality rate with nivo -AP, that hasn't changed. So I think, uh, in my opinion, this is a uh, efficacious regimen, tolerable regimen that produces so far uh, unprecedented, in my opinion, CR rate that's durable for many patients. And I think we can speak of a 
uh, breaking the barrier of cure uh, with, with this uh, regimen. And uh, all, in my opinion, regardless of risk factor, risk whether it's favorable intermediate or poor risk, Nevo EP now produces a uh, higher CR rate um, than with uh, sunitinib. And I think now, even that favorable 249 patient small cohort, uh, the, the results uh, now are, no, there is no significant difference in response rate or PFS or survival between the two arms. I believe with longer follow-up, uh, I'm hopeful that we will see that the Nevo EP arm will even break uh, towards uh, superior outcome compared to uh, the sunitinib arm when it comes to uh, the OS with, with longer follow-up. But this is an exploratory uh, cohort. Uh, it was not powered to really uh, look at all those efficacy endpoints. It was just uh, to, as an exploratory. I think a larger uh, uh, trial will probably have to look at favorable risk again to see uh, if nevo EP will be superior to, um, to uh, sunitinib. But in my opinion, the CR rate is the key here with nevo EP producing 8% CR rate in favor versus 4% with sunitinib. And the fact that 9 of 10, 90% of those CRs achieved with nevo EP in favorable risk are maintained, uh, have not relapsed, whereas uh, 3 out of the 5 have relapsed with sunitinib. So uh, this is, at the end, what is going to drive for, towards cure is the CR, CR and durability. And I believe that's achieved with nevo EP in all risk groups.